What is up everybody? Today I'm going to show you the utmost, easiest, simplest way to get on two stripers. Uh, I'll show you the rig and the bait we'll be using, so stay tuned. Alright guys, so today we're going to try something a little different. We are going to be drifting live spot for stripers. Uh, I'll give you a quick rundown of my rig. I got a 30 gram egg sinker. I got a little bead uh, between that and the swivel. My uncle Mike, king of fishing, taught me a lot, showed me this uh, you know, rig and how he uses it. So we're going to try that out. Then I got about, I don't know, two and a half feet a liter. It's a 20 pound test with an 8-0 circle hook. And all I'm going to do, let me uh, pick out a lucky spot. Just going to take a live spot, take the hook and pin it underneath the eye. Actually, let me re adjust hold this guy. I'm going to pin it between his eye and his mouth. There's a hard part of the nose and hook it right through the side like that. That way when we're drifting, the fish can swim, you know, naturally. Pop it straight down to the bottom, see if anything's hungry. Whoa, that looks like a fish. That's a fish. Oh yeah. That guy must have picked it up off the ledge. Oh yeah, striper. And we might be able to keep our spot, which is pretty cool. Yeah, buddy. And we got the spot back. That's awesome. Well, that was quick. Oh, there's a fish. There's a fish. Uh, might be nicer than I first anticipated. Yeah, he's got a little size to him. for a minute. Oh. That's a nice bass. Figure my battery just died mid-fight. Oh yeah, look at that bass. That's not a bad boy. Yeah, that's a solid backwater bass. Look at that. I'm gonna net him just for. Uh, feel like it'll be a little less damaging on him. Damn, son. Look at that. Woo wee. That's a chunk, man. Oh, son. That is one fat bass. Look at that. Look at this. Beauty, man. Absolute stud backwater bass. Um. If I were to measure this guy, I guarantee he'd probably fall in that slot, but uh, I never really keep stripers, to be honest with you. They're good to eat, but now I'll be honest with you, today I planned on taking the kayak out, but the wind is, 
you know, a little stronger than what I typically would like to fish on my kayak, especially if I'm traveling a decent distance. And today, you know, in the boat, I've already covered probably like three or four miles, which would take me easily an hour on the kayak just to even get to that distance. But uh, that's why I figured I'll give the boat the shot today. Now, boat fishing, in my opinion, is a little bit easier in certain aspects like you can cover more ground that's a fish i don't know if he knew he was hooked oh now he does now he does that fish definitely i don't think he even actually knows it's hooked right now now it does yeah i was gonna say i was waiting for that I could feel the sheer weight of the fish, but I don't think he knew he was hooked yet. Because usually they'll take a run as soon as they know, but like that. <laughs> it's another nice bass, actually. You can just tell by the weight. Them, the smaller ones that are a little bit, you know, spunky, they'll. We'll give you a good run or two, but these guys, you can just feel the weight on them, pulling. Oh, just trying to keep them away from my engine. There's the leader. Ah, he saw the boat. Want nothing to do with us. Probably gonna be one that I have to net, just for the sake of not putting too much pressure. You know, when you lift these fish up right, I don't want to crush his internal organs when I pull them out. I see guys all the time, man, mishandling these fish. And it's, it's one thing if you're going to keep it and eat it, by all means, you know, mishandle it how you want. But I'm letting all these fish go, so. Oh, look at that hoss. It's actually not a bad bass. He does not want to give up. There he goes. Oh, oh no, had him and missed him. Amateur hour on the net. Net job. Damn it, he's barely oh, I was gonna say he's barely hooked. So he's like literally like oh, there we go. Wait till you see how this guy is like legitimately barely hooked. Look at how that's hooked on him. Literally right in the roof. Uh, actually, yeah. I mean, that would have popped out pretty easily. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy, buddy. Look at that. Beautiful, man. New Jersey bass. There he goes. That's a fish. That's actually a nice fish. And I don't even know if he knows he's hooked just yet. Now he does. There's always that weird, that weird few seconds where they just don't know they're hooked. And the only reason I know that, the initial drag he was taking, which was very slow pulling, felt like he grabbed the spot and was just trying to swim. But once you lift back on that and set the hook, that's usually when that first good run comes, when they know they're hooked. And Grant, he'll probably give us another good run here once he sees the boat. Oh yeah. See, I'll tell you what. This type of fishing, I could do all year long. You really can't beat the fall, man. It's not very, you know, cold out yet. Not many people on the water, so you have a lot of spaces to fish that you're not feeling crowded. I know a lot of guys give me slack for not fishing up north when the, the big striper migrate in. And, you know, everybody's on the surf or right off the beach catching them, but 
to be honest I, I'm kind of like a weird like to fish by myself type guy or I'm not really into the whole shoulder to shoulder thing and to be honest man if you're fishing light tackle like we are these fish are just as fun in my opinion as fishing like the heavier stuff for bigger fish like look at that bass dude he's they're all about it's funny they're all like keeper sized i haven't measured any just because we're not keeping them and it just spend more time out of the water which i don't want to do to these fish but with the new slot being between 28 and 31 most of these fish are falling in that category like that's a beautiful backwater bass but i want to try and limit the amount of time that i have them out of the water because you know even in this cold water they they handle you know stress much better than they do in the warm but you know the quicker i could get it back in the better that fish is going to be off all right so that was our first spot that we actually lost just hooked the new one on it's always nice if you get multiple fish on a single bait because you know spot these days aren't that cheap um you know every once in a while i'll spend some of my summer trying to catch them and throw them in a live well to, or a bait pen to keep till you know the fall time but um you know we eventually run out and when, when you have to buy them man they can get real pricey best i've found in this area is like 30 bucks for a dozen which you know it is what it is i mean the good news when you're fishing these is like you know you have a solid chance of catching fish especially if they're finicky oh that's a that's a fish right there oh, oh. Let's see if we'll come back oh come on come back for it look he's messing with it he wants it there we go got him that time You know what I mean? Like, I don't mind paying the price if you're gonna have action like we're having right now. It's when you're spending that money and you're not catching anything when people start to regret buying bait. But it's kind of the nature of fishing. And I don't do this type of fishing often, to be honest with you. Like, I, I find it fun to do occasionally. You know, if I had to pick a, a single technique that I like to do for stripers, it'd be fishing artificials on jigs but this is pretty fun and it's a different change of pace to what we're used to man and look we might have saved that spot look he's you can see the spot on the side of its mouth as long as he doesn't come off while we're netting them we'll get a couple baits out of this one because that's a smaller striper the only reason i'm really netting them i don't want to lose that spot the, that's a small striper compared to what we've been getting. Oh. Man, I'll tell you what, even something that size is so spunky. That was that one wasn't getting away. He was hooked pretty well. Oh, ah. There you go, bud. This spot looks like he's seen better days, but we're still gonna throw him on the hook. You never know. The only thing that happens, uh, it ripped too big of a hole, so we're gonna have to kind of go through the nose and just try that way. Oop, something messing with us. Let him take it. Come on. There he is. Oh, oh son. Son. Tell you what i've gotten better with fishing the circle hooks last few times that i came out here and filmed this type of fishing i probably missed more than half the fish that we even had a chance to hook on where today i'd say we probably if i'm being honest probably missed two fish early on and then kind of slightly adjusted to what i was doing wrong and just being a little more patient. Whoa. Man. This 
This guy's got some bite to him. There's not much noises better than that one, man. So, you know, the sound of a real just drag screaming. away from my motor wow look at that one holy smokes that's a nice one that might be actually over there we go yeah that guy's definitely going to be an over that is beautiful bass man that one hooked perfectly in the corner Look at that beautiful bass. He did not want to he did not want to stay out of the water long. Now I'll be honest with you man, uh very happy that we brought our boat with us today rather than the kayak. Oh there's a fish right there. Got him. Um where I initially started today, where I thought the fish should have been. I only picked up one fish and that first spot that I stopped was a good three mile run, three and a half mile run from where I launched. So I try and put it in perspective, man. If I were in the kayak and I made that run, which three and a half miles in the kayak isn't terrible, especially if you play the tide game. But if, uh, if you just, uh, go by kayak you're kind of handicapped at where you can go after that and I probably would have gotten there in you know half hour or so and would have been kind of stuck which never a good feeling especially if you take a gamble and it doesn't pay off very lucky that uh, the second spot we stopped at has been not bad to be honest with you not the greatest striper fishing we've had, but uh, there's definitely action, which is nice. There's the uh, leader. Oh yeah, look at that guy. There, I will say this, for the most part, most of the bass are decent size compared to, you know, the slot, uh, the under slots that I normally see fishing like the shallows. Oh, he sees the net. Come on, buddy. Uh, there we go. Whew, man, I'll tell you what, they're all like, they all got a little bit of size to them. They've definitely been eating well. And this time of year, there's so much bait in the water, mullet, bunker, spot, that these guys just feast. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man, I'm trying to strike while the iron gets, while the iron's hot because, you know, these conditions can shift on a dime and got to make the most of that, you know, feeding window. I'm trying to see which way. Turn the motor. Yeah, let me turn it. Oh, I'm getting a hit. Shoot. Don't even worry about the motor right now. Got him. It's nice when things work out. I wasn't really on that spot the way I wanted to. I was trying to shift the motor, and while I'm doing that, we got struck. I might honestly uh, make this my last fish on spot. Switch over to some jigs and artificials, because if they're this fired up... Oh, look, there's... That's pretty cool. There's another one following it because the spot's on the line. Well, he might have gotten pulled off now. There's another bass under him. Trying to get the spot. That's pretty cool. Oh, I don't know where he just bit that spot. Hopefully on the boat somewhere. 
gonna be passing over that little spot we just passed and had fish. Yeah, there's definitely some life on the bottom here. Oh, as soon as I say that, look at that. I was gonna say, I knew that was some fish right there. Man, this guy is taking off. I don't think this one's as big, but he had a pretty good run for a first run. Uh, maybe, you know what? It's actually not bad. I mean, probably under for sure. But man, I'll tell you what, that like class fish, like I would say that's probably a 24, maybe 25. If I had to venture a guess, they might be even I would say 25 is probably a, a fair estimate oh yikes that was bad uh, man. terrible net job on my part there we go. actually that He's a little bigger than I thought, maybe. He's got a little weight to him, too. Yeah, I would definitely say this is definitely an under, under, possibly 25, maybe, I don't know, something around there. Still a beautiful specimen, man. Look how cool that fish is. All right, see you later.